We want to talk to you about redistricting in LA. Th this process was a little bit controversial. <laughs> can you tell us what is redistricting about and why it matters? And then we can get into what happened, what's happening in LA. Sure, so redistricting is the process of redrawing the lines for city council districts or at the state level for state level districts. And what that means is which district, which area geographically a council member is going to represent. And it matters um, for a lot of reasons. One, you want representative government in which you truly have a representative who is responsive to you, cares about your interests. And so if you have, for example, a council member who may have been uh, your representative before and you voted for them, but then they get moved to a different district, and they're no longer your representative, then, then that's sort of taken something away from you. Um, on the other hand, elected officials want desirable districts with you know, a university or a lot of development projects to gain more media attention and campaign contributions. So at the end of the day, who draws the lines and how those districts get drawn really matters for how the community is represented from that point forward. And what happened in LA? There, I guess there was this process with the city council redistricting, which was supposed to be very transparent, and then some things happened at the end that was questionable, to say the least. Yes, so Los Angeles has a city council redistricting commission that is separate from the city council itself, but the problem is that it's not truly independent from the council. And what I mean by that is that the council members choose the commissioners on the redistricting commission and the commission is only advisory. So they can advise the council on how the line should be drawn or they could recommend a map. But at the end of the day, the council itself is deciding the districts. So despite having this redistricting commission, the city council is really pulling the strings behind the scenes and ultimately deciding the map in the end. Um, and that led to a lot of sort of controversy and uh, power grabs behind the scenes this time around. Um, for example, you had commissioners who were replaced and removed at the last minute within the process. And so after you know, nearly a year of public hearings and meetings where citizens could give comments, draft maps could be considered, and uh, community leaders could offer feedback, and commissioners heard that and responded to it, some of those commissioners were just replaced without good cause um, because city council members weren't happy with how the process was going and they wanted better political allies on the commission. And so the problem is if you remove those commissioners at the last minute and replace them with someone who wasn't there, it's kind of like removing a juror who had witnessed an entire trial right before the verdict is going to be rendered um, with someone who didn't even watch the trial in the first place. So that was just one of the problems with the process. These commissioners, they were meeting with the public for a long time, right? There is a lot of input into this and then a lot of maps considered and then some map that wasn't considered actually got voted on at the end, right? Can you explain how it, it happened? Yes, so the commission had nearly a year of meetings, thousands of members of the public participated, and at the end of that process, the commission recommended a map to the city council. Um, however, rather than adopting that map, the city council created a subcommittee of council members to decide the map on their own. And they kind of blended the commission's map with a map from the Labor Council for Latin American Advancement to form like a hybrid map, they called it. And the controversy surrounding this Labor Council map was that it didn't go through the process of um, being vetted by the commission and the public hearings that other draft maps did. It sort of came in at the last minute um, even the commission's president said he didn't know the derivation or origin. He didn't know where this labor, mount, labor council map came from. Um, and so if you think about it, it's very strange to have this nearly year-long process to decide district lines, have a draft map, and then at the end of the day, it's combined with this other map that wasn't even part of the process and wasn't submitted in time for the commission's deadline. So to a lot of members of the public, it's kind of a slap in the face to why did we participate in this process in you know, discussing these maps when you're just gonna pick this other map that we didn't even have a chance to give input on. 
One of the reasons that they didn't accept that map, one of the councilmen said that the census is, is based on, it's based on the census and the census is not accurate. What are your thoughts on that? Well, even if it were the case that the census isn't accurate, that doesn't really justify why that specific map that they chose was the solution. Because is there any evidence that that map is a better representation than the census? I don't think that there is. And so the objection that the census may not be completely accurate um, is unrelated in my view to the selection of the Labor Council's map to make the hybrid map that the, that the council al ultimately chose. And some of the commissioners even were upset about what happened because they spent a lot of time, right? Yeah, the commissioners were outspoken that they didn't feel the process was working as intended and they specifically were critical of the ex-party communications going on between council members and council staff and commissioners. And an ex-party communication just means it's not public, right? It's a behind closed doors, behind the scenes um, communication where a council member is talking to a commissioner or a council member's staff is talking to a commissioner, you know, trying to get the maps drawn more favorably to them. And the commissioners had asked the council to put a ban on these ex-party communications because they didn't want politicians meddling in the process, but the council members refused naturally because they wanted to be able to influence the process behind the scenes. Now, what is in it for these council members? You, you touched on having a big university or a lot of development in your area. That's why people want to have certain things in their area, in their district. What is in it for these city councilmen? Well, first and foremost, uh, council members want to be reelected. And so they want to have districts where they're going to have a lot of support. Maybe the people who voted for them last time are in the same district. And a way to maybe punish an opponent is to put them in a district away from the people who voted for them. And one of the biggest controversies this time around was that the commission's draft map would have completely changed the district of one of the two council members, either Nithya Raman or Paul Krikorian, and given them 100% different constituents, which is extremely bizarre in terms of redistricting, right? It's bad for the council member. It's bad for the constituents because the council member doesn't have their voters anymore. And the voters don't have the person they voted for to represent them. And that's why it's unheard of to change a district that drastically. And those people that didn't vote for the council member are actually getting a new council member, right, essentially, right? Yeah, exactly. So no one's really being represented by who they voted for if you completely change the districts like that. Um, and so a number of council members were upset about that. What do they get from having these benefits, having developers or universities and donors? And so the council members, they don't want to just win re-election, right? They want to have a lot of campaign contributions, a lot of media attention. And so if you think about it, if you're the representative for a prestigious universities district, or you're the representative in downtown Los Angeles where there's a development boom, then you have easy access to media coverage, to campaign contributions from developers who are trying to win over your approval. Um, and compare that to someone who may not represent a wealthy neighborhood or a university, and they don't get access to those easy campaign contributions. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes you know, it can cross the line from legal campaign contributions into illegal activity, as we saw with representative former council member Weezar. Um, and that can arguably be traced back to the past redistricting process as well. Uh, Representative Wiesar was a close ally of the former council president, Herb Wesson, and so he got a district that had downtown LA with a development boom and a lot of money coming his way. But unfortunately, the line was crossed and he was indicted for allegedly taking over $1.5 million in bribes, um, a lot of it from foreign sources. So council members have this incentive to have districts with a lot of assets, but the problem is it distributes power unevenly among the council members where one has a lot of uh, media coverage and campaign contributions and others don't have nearly the same to match. So essentially it opens the room door for potential corruption as this goes on, right? Yes, if you're not careful um, in how you draw the lines, it can open the door for 
you know, more um, close-knit relationships with city contractors and developers who are trying to win your favor. And whenever that happens, you have those who are willing to cross the line, whether it's through, you know, straight out bribery or some of the strange things we saw uh, with, you know, escorts and, you know, envelopes of cash given in Vegas bathrooms with some of the other former council members. In terms of the public, what is the public uh, doing when they're looking at this? Does the public see this happening or are they not really aware of it? Because a lot of people may not be aware of how important the redistricting process is. And